We know where the Spirit of the Lord is. The Spirit of the Lord is there as a liberty. We know we're living in your freedom. Living in your freedom, we see your glory. We know where the Spirit of the Lord is. The Spirit of the Lord is there as a liberty. We yours, and yours is the kingdom. Is the kingdom.
You know, it helps to, uh, to have everything hooked up so you can hear the music up here before you start to play. Um, so I started, I started that song. Um, this is a little insight for you guys. Look, Allison's helping me here. Thank you, Allison. Look, this is what a good, good band does. Yeah. They help each other. Um, <laughs> so I started playing that song. I was like, mm, I can't hear anything. And I was like, I bet I didn't plug my ears in. That's much better. Thank you. But the show um, must go on. The show must go on. That's right. Um, so we, uh, our other motto, in case y'all didn't know, the motto for, for the band and the media team, um, all the visual stuff is, eh, we'll make it work. So that's what we did on that song. But hey, we're glad that y'all are here worshiping with us today, especially if this is your very first time. We hope that you experience the love of Jesus um, and a different kind of church. We're going to sing three more songs together. Uh, so y'all keep standing, keep singing with us as we continue. Whom shall I fear? 
Whom shall I be afraid? I will wait for you. I will wait for you. I will remain confident in this. I will see the goodness of the Lord. I will remain confident in this. I will see the goodness of the
one more time. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. God, we are so honored to stand before you and worship you. We are so blessed that you love us unconditionally, that you pursue us every single day. No matter what we do, no matter how many times we turn our backs to you, you never turn on us. God, I just pray that we all pursue you just as you pursue us every day. That we walk in this life without fear, knowing that you are always two steps ahead, that you carry us all the way, God. Let us remember that you are made stronger through our weakness. God, be with Jimmy today as he brings this message. We all need to hear it. Open our hearts, open our minds, and let us walk out of this place with peace. It's in your son's precious and holy name I pray. Amen. Amen. All right, it's time for the Mingle Minute. I want you to turn around and welcome someone to the Ridge and tell them you're excited to see them this morning. the 007 just oh, cuz 007 mission, mission impossible. impossible oh fail <laughs> sorry my bad oh my goodness <laughs> just so you know, let me make uh, a connection for y'all just so you know the message today is about facing an impossible situation so <gasps> if, if you need some Jimmy, looks like Jimmy needs help with his message <laughs> just call me captain obvious all right I should have known that uh let me start off with saying good morning ridge Man, I'm so glad to see you here this morning. And um, if you're a first-time visitor, man, we just we think you found the best church in all of Columbus. We're so glad that you woke up early to be a part of our early service. We hope you experience two things. One is the love of Jesus Christ. No matter who you are, no matter what you've done, no matter what burden you brought in here this morning, please know that God loves you so much, and so do we. Number two, we want you to experience a different kind of church. And uh, let me fill you on a couple things that are coming up that might be a little bit different from how you used to do church or how you remember church being. Um, while I go over these announcements, though, take these Connect cards, and let's go ahead and fill these out. And if you are a regular uh, of the Ridge, um, the back part is for you, tithes and offerings, but everybody needs to fill out the front. And if you're visiting with us, don't worry about the information. We just want to know who's worshiping with us, okay? So if you'd fill out as much as you feel comfortable with Either way, place these in the offering baskets when they come by in just a minute. But let me run through a couple things while you're doing that. Uh, one is our student ministry. Tonight, they are meeting for bowling at Bolero, uh, Bolero, Bolorama, Bolero at 5.30. So um, make sure that they're there. And also, if you want to know more about the student ministries and the Ridge Runner event, you got one of these uh, along with the message notes this morning. And Nathan and Autumn are going to go over all of these things with the parents after the 1030 service, okay? So we got a lot of parents that are coming to the 1030 service because right after that, they're going to go through all the Ridge Runners and the student stuff uh, that's coming up this fall, okay? So if you forgot about that meeting, no big deal. Go somewhere, have some coffee in between services at the next service, and then be back at 1130 for that meeting, okay? But they'll, you can take this home anyway. And all of the, the events are also on the Ridge app and online as well, so you can keep up there as well. Also, Pizza with the Pastor is coming up on September 16th. If you're new and just want to learn more about who we are, um, I'd love to invite you to pizza, to have pizza with me at Mellow Mushroom on September 16th. You just write pizza 
right there, and I'll get back to you with more information on how that happens. And also, Membership 101 is coming up on September 22nd. If you've been coming to the church and you're ready to join the church family, we have 101 and 201 and 301 that we'd like for you to sign up for. So 101's coming up on September 22nd. We'll stay after the 1030 service for just about an hour, child care's in, uh, included, and also lunch. And we'll uh, share with you more about who we are and what it means to be a member of this family. Also, Good Works Projects. Um, Don and Ann have stood up here and told you everything about what's going on with the service projects. Uh, and here's a list of them up on the screen. And I'm going to turn around and look too. There's Cutting Grass. There's Mobility Worldwide where people uh, put together wheelchairs for those in need. There's Sports Equipment Drive, Handwritten Notes, Society of St. Andrews, some things to do there at that facility. Holiday Projects coming up and Foster Kids. Uh, projects to take part in. So if you're interested in any of those uh, serving opportunities, stop by the Good Works table after the um, service is over. I believe Jessica's going to be out there and be able to answer any of your questions. Also, one more thing. I've already had some people looking at me confused with this little thing that you got in here, okay? We have a new series starting up in mid-September called Ask Me Anything. I'm really excited about this. Here's what's going to happen. I'm going to put myself on the hot seat and answer your questions, okay? Whatever questions you have over two Sunday periods. So this is your chance to ask whatever has been on your mind. I'm going to do my best to answer the questions from dating and marriage to whether or not you can lose your salvation. But I want to know ahead of time, okay? Uh, I want to be prepared. I'm not going to take these questions cold because I have no idea what Bill Simrall may ask in front of everybody, okay? So... Uh, write down those questions, and I'm going to go through them, and I'm going to pick the ones that everybody seems, uh, seems to come up the most, and we're going to answer those over a couple of weeks. This should be a great, great series, okay? Also, just drop these in the offering baskets when they come by, okay? Uh, so take a minute and think about that. Uh, that's everything for right now. Um, let's pause, and we'll pray together, and we will jump into the series that we've been in called Stronger, um, and we'll also take up our tithes and offering, but before we do... Let's just pause and pray. God, we love you, and we thank you for the blessings that you provide in our lives. God, sometimes it's hard to remember to thank you because we just get so overwhelmed. But Jesus, no matter what we face, we know that we always have reason to praise you because, God, even if this was just for this and nothing else, God, you gave us your son. You gave us your son, Jesus, to give us life. And God, you're always with us. Uh, you're even with us right now. So Jesus, just please move within us today and teach us as we keep going through this series and trying to understand, God, how to face those overwhelming situations that come up in life, how to, how to face those difficult moments with the strength that you provide. And God, speaking of overwhelming situations, God, just, just pray for the people here at the Ridge. Um, we pray for the needs and the concerns that are weighing heavy on people's hearts that came in here this morning. God, please be with them. Comfort them and provide in a way that only you can. God, with your peace and guidance. Then, Jesus, we pray that you would bless these tithes and offerings. And we thank you for the ability to give back to you and to your kingdom. It's in Jesus' name we pray these things. Amen. Okay, so I've really enjoyed the series that we've been in for the past few weeks. And what we're doing is we're talking about how difficult life can be and how to gain more of God's strength because goodness knows we need it, right? God is good, God is great, and he wants to provide for us. So the first week we talked about how when we face uh, those difficult situations in life, sometimes it's very tempting to look up to heaven and ask why. Like, why is this happening? But maybe we should look up to heaven and ask what? Like, God, what are you trying to teach me in this? 
Because as Christians, we believe that God is actively participating in our life. Like God is with us always. He continues to guide and direct us. So maybe when those tough moments happen, because this world is just broken, maybe, maybe it's not a question of why, but maybe a question of what. Like, what can I learn from this? What do I do? Where do I go now? Like, God, give me direction through this. And we, t- we talked through that. And then last week, we talked about how to take the strength, how to, how to gain the strength that's needed to really take a stand in life. Because this world, this world is broken as it is, continues to try to get us to conform to its ways, right? But what we want is we don't want to conform to the world. What we want is to be transformed by Christ himself. And and that only happens when we're willing to gain the strength that comes from Christ and take a stand for what we believe in, take a stand for our faith. So today, what I want to do is I want to keep working through the book of Daniel. I think this is one of the reasons that I love this series so much is that I love telling stories. And I love the stories in the Bible and what they teach us. And what we've been doing is working through the book of Daniel, and today I'm going to go into the second chapter. We spent two weeks just in the first chapter. And and let me just go ahead and tell you what we're going to be covering. Today we're going to talk about those moments in life where we have to face the impossible. Okay, when we just have something impossible in front of us. For instance, Sometimes the impossible just happens, like to us. We're we're faced with this overwhelming circumstance. Or other times uh, when the impossible happens is when people ask us to do something that's just crazy. Like, have you ever had a boss or a parent or a friend ask you to do something and they're like, you know, I really need you to do this for me. And you're looking at them like they're crazy because what they've asked you to do is just outrageous. You're like, you know, I don't have the time. I don't have the money. I don't have the energy to do any of this. I don't have the expertise. I I have no idea what you're talking about. Like, you have got to be kidding me. Like, this is too much. This, what you're asking me to do right now, is impossible. Maybe a month from now, maybe a year, but right now, everything I'm going through, forget about it. This is kind of what happens to Daniel in the second chapter. Okay, the king literally looks at Daniel, he looks at everybody in his court, and he asks them to do something that is seemingly impossible. Now, in case you've been out the past couple weeks, let me bring you up to speed on where we are. Daniel is a book in the Old Testament. Okay, and we started off this series by explaining that Daniel was only 15 years old when Jerusalem was attacked. Okay, and it was, it was overtaken by the Babylonian king Nebuchadnezzar. And, and everyone was taken into captivity or... Uh, you know, a lot of people were taken into captivity, where they were taken to modern-day Iraq, where they lived for the next 70 years. At the time, the Babylonians were the biggest empire in the world. Okay, enormous power, enormous influence. And even though Daniel is one of these kids, he's only 15 when this happens, even though he's taken as a slave to this area, God blesses Daniel in the middle of all this because he keeps his faith. Because he is strong in who he is and what he believes in. Okay, he keeps his faith when Jerusalem is overtaken and just literally destroyed. He keeps his faith and takes a stand for what he believes in, even when the king wants him to eat the food and he doesn't want to eat the food because he believes it goes against what, uh, what he was taught. And we talked about that last week. But over and over and over again, we see Daniel taking a stand. We see his faith on display. And God continues to bless him. And in those blessings come promotions. And Daniel keeps getting promoted. And that brings us to chapter 2. So, let's go ahead and dive in. We've got a lot to cover this morning, so I'm just going to dive right into chapter 2, verse 1. If you brought your Bibles and you want to follow along, I'm going to be reading in the New Living Translation, the NLT version. Um, This... These scriptures, they're not on your message notes, but they're going to be up here on the screen so you can follow along as well, okay? So here we go. Chapter 2, verse 1. One night during the second year of his reign, Nebuchadnezzar had such disturbing dreams that he couldn't sleep. Okay, pause real quick. Notice that it says the second year of King Nebuchadnezzar's reign. That would be the second year after taking Daniel as hostage, as a slave. Okay, so Daniel was 15 when he was taken, so two years later. So this, this means that Daniel's about 17 years old now. Okay, I just want to give you a timeline. I want you to see that he's still very young when all this has taken place. Okay, so back to the story. The king has a really bad dream. Verse 2. He calls in his magicians, enchanters, sorcerers, and astrologers. And he demanded that they tell him what he dreamed. As he stood before the king, he said, I have had a dream that deeply troubles me, and I've got to know what it means. And the astrologers answered the king in Aramaic, 
Long live the king. Tell us the dream, and we'll tell you what it means. Okay, now starting off this story, you may think this is kind of weird, but it's not weird uh, according to this time and customs because this king, remember, he's a pagan king that has overtaken Jerusalem, okay? So he has all these mediums and sorcerers and astrologers all around him, all pagan, all false idol worship leaders, okay? And he brings them all in, and he's like, tell me what this dream means. And everybody's standing before the king. He's like, all right, that's good. Tell us what the dream is, and we'll tell you what it means because we can just make something up. Like, we'll all get in a huddle after this is over. After you tell us, we'll all come up with a good plan, and then we'll come back and tell you what we all think, okay? Sounds like a good plan, but the king has something else in mind. Verse 5. But the king said to the astrologers, I'm serious about this. If you don't tell me what my dream was and what it means, you're going to be torn limb from limb and your houses will be turned into heaps of rubble. But if you tell me what I dreamed and what the dream means, I'm going to give you wonderful gifts and honors. So just tell me the dream and what it means. Okay, this is actually really smart from the king. The king is probably looking across his court, and he's looking at all these guys going, how long have y'all been here? Like, how much am I paying y'all? Like, how long have y'all been eating my food, staying in my palace? Let's see if you're really worth what I, uh, keeping you around, right? So if you are really magical, like if you're really worth everything, then I need you to tell me what I dreamed, and then tell me what it means. And if you don't, well, I'm going to kill all of you and start over because obviously you're frauds, right? And all these guys start shaking in their boots and they're thinking to themselves, this is crazy. Skip down to verse 10. The astrologers replied to the king, no one on earth can tell the king his dream. We can't do this. And no king, however great and powerful, has ever asked such a thing of any magician, enchanter, or astrologer. The king's demand is impossible, Focus on that word. This is impossible. This can't be done. They're looking at the king going, this is ridiculous. You cannot ask us to do this. And just so you know, no other king in all of history has ever asked for anybody to do this. Basically, like king, you have lost your mind. This is crazy. So, of course, that leads us to verse 12. The king was furious when he heard this. And he ordered that all the wise men of Babylon be executed. Take them all out. And because of the king's decree, men were sent to find and kill Daniel and his friends. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Now, how is Daniel caught up in all of this? You see, Daniel, even though he's not in the court right then and they have to go find him, Daniel is being made to serve into the court. So the king has just lost his mind. He's like, kill everybody. Kill everybody that's working in my court. So this affects Daniel and it affects his friends. And, and you know them because you know their story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, right? So these magic men have really messed up Daniel and his friends. So they come to grab Daniel. And Daniel looks at the guys when they do, and they go, whoa, whoa, whoa. Daniel says, hold on, tell me what's going on. And so they tell him. And I imagine Daniel probably mumbles under his breath, mutters, amateurs. Right? And he's like, let me talk to the king. Verse 16. Daniel went at once to see the king. And he requested more time to tell the king what the dream was meant. So Daniel's conversation with the king is a little different. He doesn't say it's impossible. But it is kind of impossible, right? I mean, Daniel and his friends, they could have talked, they could have had a thousand different stories to share with the king. And none of them would have been right. But what ends up happening in the story is something that only God can do. So, as we talk about this story, the crazy situation that Daniel finds himself in, what I want to do is I want to share with you some of, the, some of the things Daniel did in the middle of this trouble. And here's why. It's because I believe these same suggestions will help you in those moments when you're faced with the impossible. Maybe, like I said earlier, someone is asking you to do something that just seems outrageous. And maybe you don't have the time, and you don't have the money, and you don't have the expertise, and you have no clue what you're doing. These things may help. Or maybe, maybe it's not a person at all. But maybe you walked in here this morning, and you're just burdened. And you feel this weight on your shoulders, and you're thinking to yourself, 
I have no idea how this is going to work out, whatever it is, fill in the blank. This seems impossible. This is a terrible situation that I've been placed in. I can't see up from down. What am I going to do? But even though it's impossible, you realize that you're going to have to face this issue, whatever it is, you're going to have to face it head on because it's coming at you, it can't be stopped. What do you do? Like, how do you find the strength that you need in those moments when the impossible is just looming over you. So let's, let's look at that. How, how to deal with the impossible. Number one, write this down. Don't panic. Number one, don't panic. We read this in the story of Daniel. I also ask this, don't be afraid, okay? And this is hard for me to do. I'm just gonna be honest with y'all. I'm honestly, I'm really surprised at how well Daniel handles this situation. He seems so calm in the middle of all this because this would essentially be like a foreign government sending an assassin to your home to take you out. Like, how would you handle that? I would not handle that at, well at all. Just last week, in fact, just last week, I was mowing the grass, and a friend of mine stopped on the road while I was mowing the grass. He snuck around the bushes where I couldn't see him, ran up behind me, and yelled at me loud enough to scared me half to death. And I am ashamed to admit that I may have screamed a little and, and ruined my pants. Anyway, anyway, if anybody has a good way that I can get Lucas um, Hammock back, let me know. But imagine, I, I'm just, I'm always scared. Imagine these guys sneaking over to your house, not to scare you, but to kill you. And Daniel is very calm when he talks to them and talks to this guy down. Look at Scripture 14. It says, When Arioch, the commander of the king's guard, not just anyone, though, the commander comes to kill him, came to kill them, Daniel handled this situation with wisdom and discretion. I don't think you could have used those two words to describe me. But Daniel didn't panic. He wasn't afraid. One of my favorite verses is Joshua 1.9 that says, Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. So let me ask you, as we kick this thing off, what is that impossible situation? What is that thing in your life that's got you panicked? What is that crazy task that's in front of you? It could be at work. The boss is very demanding. It could be in the family, and this relationship just seems beyond repair. It could be dealing with money. You're trying to get out of debt, and it just doesn't seem to be working. Could be your health. Things have taken a turn. First thing, don't panic. Don't be afraid. Remember what Scripture teaches us, that God is with us wherever we go. Let me give you the next point because I believe it helps with the first point. Point number two is this. Push pause. Push pause and take some time. Don't panic. Push pause. Take a minute. And the reason I say this is because something I've had to learn through the years... I believe the biggest temptation that we face in those moments of crisis is to be impulsive, right? It's kind of like being in a car wreck. When when you get out of a wreck, you're not thinking logically, you're not thinking rationally, you're thinking emotionally. Your your emotions are driving your decisions. I remember when Say was in her wreck a little while back, she called me terrified, and I arrived on the scene, and after seeing that she was okay, my first impulse was to go up to that 25-year-old guy that was driving that car that ran out in front of her in a car that didn't belong to him and didn't have insurance and just share Jesus with him. (laughs) Or help him meet Jesus early, (laughs) whichever. I'm teasing, I'm teasing, I'm teasing. But sometimes in those moments, we need some time to process, right? And there's nothing wrong with that. Because it's more important to make the right decision than it is to make a fast decision. And the reason I bring this up is because this is what Daniel did. Look at chapter 2, verse 16. Daniel went at once to see the king, and he requested more time to tell the king what the dream meant. Daniel's going to give it his best shot. He's not going to say it's impossible, because he's going to leave this open for God to do something that only God can do. Now, while we're talking about this point, one thing that I think needs to be mentioned is this. Having more time doesn't mean procrastinating. Conversely, I think it's also interesting that Daniel didn't wait to address the problem. He goes immediately to the king. It says in that verse, in fact, go back, go back to that verse, Daniel 2.16, and circle those words, when at once. 
He went at once. Circle that phrase. He went at once. I think it's pretty gutsy that a 17-year-old goes straight to the king. He's like, whoa, 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 let's talk about this. He goes straight to the king to ask for more time. So let me ask you this question as we get into this point number two. Where are you procrastinating? Maybe you're dragging your heels on something that you know needs to be done, and the reason that you're delaying that situation is because you know it's going to be painful. You know it's going to be hard. You just keep putting it off. Let me ask you this way. What are you pretending isn't a problem in your marriage? Maybe you don't want to deal with it because you know it's going to be a big deal. And you're just not ready for it. What are you pretending isn't a huge weakness in your life? Maybe you're telling yourself that it's not an addiction, but you keep doing it over and over and over again. You see, procrastination never solved problems. What it does is actually it makes things worse. It's, it, worse. it's, it's kind of like getting sick. Like if you were to get a bad diagnosis, you know, the idea is to get medicine, to get the treatment sooner than later, the longer you wait, the worse it gets, right? It's the same thing. So, so when, I take, when I say take some time, I'm not saying don't procrastinate, don't procrastinate about the problem. Go straight to the problem. Go straight to the source. And then take some time with that person, with that situation, to talk through, uh, to work through what may need to happen. And that leads me to point number three. Number three is this, enlist some prayer warriors. Because when you're dealing with a person or situation, whatever, you're going to need some prayerful support. This is a really big deal. The king is crazy. He's about to kill everybody in the court, including Daniel and his friends. So Daniel realizes, you know what? I need my prayer team involved in this. Look at these verses in verse 17 through 18. It says this, Then Daniel went home and he told his friends, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, otherwise known as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He told them what happened. And he urged them, Hey guys, ask the God of heaven to show them his mercy by telling them the secret. So they wouldn't be executed along with all the other wise men of Babylon. He goes home and he's like, guys, let's seek God in prayer. We need him. Let me, let me ask you this simple question for point number three. Do you, do you have people that you can call? Do you have people in your life that will pray with you? Everybody needs a prayer team. People that will pray with you because the impossible always happens in life. Sooner or later, if you're not in it right now, your life is going to take a detour. You're going to head off in a different direction, and you're going to need strong people around you praying with you. That's why journey groups are so important. That's why in a couple of weeks, you're going to hear me every Sunday get up here and beg and plead, please get into a journey group. Please get around tables or get into a room with people that you can just lean into and trust in. Because what happens in this situation is that all it takes is, all it takes is four people. It takes Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to pray about this. And they move the heart of God. And God answers and responds. Because they were willing to seek him. But when you pray, let me give you point number four. Pray and expect God to help. When you're faced with those impossible situations, here's what I want you to do. I want you to pray, but I want you to pray bold prayers. Because sometimes we're going to need God to do what only God can do. We're going to be in those situations in life where unless God shows up, we're messed up. So pray to God, but pray for the things that you need and expect Him to come through. You might need financing when it looks like you're going to have to file for bankruptcy. You might need more connections for your business. You know, you might need more education to do whatever's been placed in front of you. You don't have all the answers, so pray to the one who can give you supernatural help. And here's what you've got to understand about this. God wants to do this. Over and over again in the Bible, it says that we should come to God and ask him for what we need, because he loves helping us out. In Matthew, it says that God is like this perfect heavenly father who loves giving good gifts to his children. He loves coming through for them. I, I was reminded of this just last week, Shannon and I were at the movies, and we were standing in line for popcorn, and in front of us was a grandfather and, the, and his little grandchild. And he must have spent like $100, because they got two big things of 
of drinks. We all know how expensive it could be to go to the movies. And then they got these two huge boxes. This box was as big as the child was, filled with popcorn and candy. And I don't know who had a bigger smile on their face, the child or the granddad. <laughs> and I looked at Shannon. I was like, that's going to be us one day. Like, we're just going to be spending, a, just giving them whatever they want. And I just picturing God up in heaven when we're faced with these impossible situations, God with that smile, just thinking about all he wants to do for us, how he wants to provide for us. But notice in this point I put to pray and expect God to move. Okay, because on the other hand, if you pray, but you don't really think God's going to come through, then don't bother praying. Okay, because I don't think God really wants to respond to, to whining or complaining or griping or anything like that. God is moved when you trust him. God is moved when you have great faith and great expectations. And you're coming to God and you're like, God, unless you show up, this is all messed up. I can't deal with this. I need you to come and I need you to do this and I'm trusting that you will. Let me share this verse with you. I love this. James, the brother of Jesus, he teaches. This is the only verse outside of the book of Daniel. It looks kind of out of place, but I want to share this. James chapter 1 with you. The brother of Jesus says this. If any of you needs wisdom, you should ask God and it will be given to you. God is generous and won't correct you for asking. In other words, James is trying to tell us, listen, Jesus wants to help, but you have to ask him. Okay, we believe in this thing called free will. God's, God's up in heaven wanting to do more, but he's waiting for us to believe and trust and ask. He's not going to force his way into our life. You have to invite him in. So if you ask, just ask him. He's generous. He won't correct you for it. Verse 6. But here's the deal. When you ask for something, you got to have faith and not doubt. Because anyone who doubts is like an ocean wave that's tossed around in the storm. If you're that kind of person, you can't make up your mind. Well, you can't be trusted. So don't expect the Lord to give you anything at all. How blunt is that? James is like, if you're not going to believe about it, if you're not going to believe in it, then don't ask. Don't bother asking. But if you're faced with an impossible situation, if that burden is heavy, if that person is just being unreasonable, pray and ask God. And believe. And see what God can do with that type of faith. Let's move on to the next point. Worship God through it. Point number five. Worship God through it. When you're praying... When you're dealing with worship God in the middle of it. And let me explain what I mean by that. A lot of you think that worship is just music. Music is just one way to worship God. There's actually a lot more. Worship is any time I turn my attention to God. When I express my love to God, that's worship. You can be in the car. You can be at the gym. You can be at the school. You can be outside. You can be at Five Guys. Wherever. You can worship God. What I'm getting at is that worship is any time I take my focus off the problem and I put my focus on God. I take my focus off the thing that's scaring me half to death and I focus on the one who has the solution. I, I stop concentrating on the impossible and I start concentrating on the immutable. God. You see, Daniel does this and God fills him and reveals to him what needs to be said. Fills him in. Fills Daniel in on everything he needs to know about the king. And then what happened is this. Look at chapter 2, verse 19. Then Daniel praised the God of heaven. And scripture writes out his prayer of praise. You can go and read it in chapter 2. Daniel worshiped and prayed. He worshiped and prayed before the problem happened. He worshiped and prayed while the impossible situation was occurring. And then he worships and prays after everything has been resolved. Daniel never ceases to worship God. Your worship has the power to move the heart of God to give you the strength to face the impossible. Whatever you're going through right now, let God be that focus. And then the last thing I would say is this. When everything is said and done, point to God, point to God. When everything is over and the impossible has been accomplished, and you know what needs to be done? Let me give you one thing to remember is to point to God. Don't forget to give him glory for it and give him credit for what he's done. Don't you hate it when somebody takes credit for something that you did or something that you came up with? Like you're at work and you got this great idea and you share it with a, uh, you know, somebody 
on the team, and then they take it to the boss and share it as though it was their idea, and you're like, but wait, I came up with that. That would. How, how do you think God feels if we just forget about them after the fact? Because that's often what we do. We don't think about God when things are going well. So once we move past it, we kind of tend to forget about him. What I'm saying is don't forget to praise him for who he is and what he's done. And that's what Daniel does. Daniel doesn't accept any of the credit. He doesn't forget about God. After it's been revealed, he points to God. So let me finish this story out. It says this, Daniel replied. He looks at the king. He says, king, there are no wise men. There are no enchanters, magicians, or fortune tellers that can reveal the king's secret. Let me reiterate. King, you're crazy. Okay, this can't be done. Nobody can do this, not even your magic men. Verse 28. But there is a God in heaven. I want you to write that whole phrase down. I don't know if I've ever given you a phrase for fill in the blank. But, but there is a God in heaven. What an amazing statement of faith. What if we took that with us today? It, if you don't remember anything about this sermon today, take that phrase with you. Whatever the impossible is that's happening now, whatever the impossible is that's going to happen in the future. What if we looked at every situation that is in front of us like Daniel did when he looked at the king and said, but there is a God in heaven. I know that this looks awful. I know that this looks hard. I know that this is painful. This is going to be painful to go through, but there is a God in heaven. He says, but there is a God in heaven who reveals secrets. And he has shown King Nebuchadnezzar what will happen in the future. Now I will tell you your dream and the visions you saw as you laid in your bed. And then Daniel goes on to explain the dream. Do y'all want to know what it was? Go home and read chapter 2. Okay? Seriously, it's a long one. I don't have time to go through it all. <laughs> we'll be in here. I can already hear people gathering outside. Um, go home and read it, but I, I, I'll fill you in. It shows the future of King Nebuchadnezzar's reign. It actually shows the future for the next couple centuries. It even involves a vision for God's kingdom. It's, it's pretty amazing. But let me back up. Let me back up. How tempted would you be to take credit for this? I mean, think about it. How tempted would you be to walk into the court and look at all those magicians? Look at all those, look at Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Look at the king and go, guys, don't worry. I got this. I got this all figured out. I know exactly what it is. I got to admit, it'd be pretty tempting. Um, especially if you're only 17 years old like Daniel was. But Daniel points to God. He always points to God. And because he points to God in heaven, what happens next is that King Nebuchadnezzar worships God. In fact, King Nebuchadnezzar tells everybody right then and there, he says, Daniel's God is obviously the greatest God. And then something amazing happens. Look at verse 48. Then the king appointed Daniel to a high position and gave him many valuable gifts. He made Daniel ruler over the whole province of Babylon, 17, as well as chief over all the wise men. Daniel, you're the best, and your God is the greatest. You see, in the middle of all this that seemed impossible, Daniel had courage and strength and faith. And what God did was because of his faith and because of that courage, God rewarded him and gave him even more responsibility. God looked down at the life of Daniel and was like, man, you handled that? amazing. And because you trusted me, because you came to me, because you did all of these things and you worshiped me and you pointed to me, guess what, Daniel? I'm going to give you even more. I'm going to give you more responsibility. So let me close this out and just ask, what seems impossible in your life right now? What is that one thing, or maybe it's a couple of things that's just got you panicked? What's causing you to stay awake at night? Is it debt? Is it work? When am I going to get married? When am I going to have a baby? Am I going to have this dream come true in my life? Am I going to get over this hump? Win, 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 win. There are multiple impossible situations that we could be facing that just seem to be piling up. And you're wondering to yourself, and you came in here thinking, is it ever going to work out? I just don't know. Have you prayed about it? Have you asked God and, and, are you expecting him to come through? Have the courage to believe and to trust in him and see what he can do. 
Whatever's facing you out there, look at it and say, but there is a God in heaven. Let's pray together. God, we can't predict the future. We don't know what's ahead of us. We don't know what's going to happen next. But God, we serve you. And we were reminded of the phrase that there is a God in heaven. God, uh, someone that not only knows the problems that we face now, but already knows the situations we're going to be facing in the future. So God, we pray for the things that are happening to us right now that just seem impossible for the ones that are, and for the ones that are heading our way in the future. God, we're not going to panic. Like Daniel, we're not going to be afraid. We're going to take our time to breathe, take our time to process what's going on, Maybe even to ask others, God, to to pray on our behalf. Because that's where the answer lies, is with you. God, how how can we expect you to work if we're not willing to ask you? So God, we're going to pray and we're going to expect you to move because we have the faith that you are the God that moves mountains. You are the sovereign one over all that can do all things. So God, as we leave here this morning... Help us to get that focus off the problem and that focus on you, the one who holds the solution. God, as we pass through the impossible, may we, may we not forget to worship you and to point to you, to give you the glory that you deserve because you are worthy of all our praise. We love you so much. It's in Jesus' name we pray all these things. Amen. Amen. Um, listen, thank you so much for being here today. Uh, if there are any first-time visitors, we've got a gift for you at the info table. Please stop by. And remember, we've got a parent meeting at 1130, so if you want to come back, we'd love to have you. I love you all. Have a great day. We'll see you back next Sunday. Thanks for being here. You're dismissed.